Making good thumbnails that will actually get people to click on your videos is probably the most important skill that a YouTuber can have. It usually takes months, if not years, to figure out what type of thumbnails will actually captivate people enough to stop scrolling and just click on that video. Personally, I think it took me about a year and a half before I started really, really knowing exactly what to do so I wasn't lost when I was making my thumbnails. But in this video, you're taking a shortcut because I'm going to give you all my secrets and everything I've learned throughout the years of doing YouTube uh, on how to make very, very good thumbnails that will make people want to click. Hey guys, got Level here and today we're going to be talking about making thumbnails. And first of all, don't bring up Photoshop. <laughs> first thing that I want from you is to not tell me I can't make thumbnails because I don't have Photoshop. This is a lazy excuse from your part. <laughs> well, that sounds, that sounds kind of mean, but for real, you can use Canva to make amazing thumbnails. You can use Photoshop photopia.com which is basically photoshop for free online where you don't have to install anything you can use uh, pixlr.com which is another photo editor you can use whatever you want having photoshop is is not what makes or breaks a thumbnail so today we're going to be discussing how to present clear information in said thumbnail we're going to talk about the very very clear limits that you have when making thumbnails we'll talk about how to format your text how to add context how to present the main subject how to play around with colors and color combinations in order to achieve the most important thing contrast but right before all that a message from our sponsor this portion of the video is sponsored by owned owned is your one-stop shop for customizing your live stream they have a wide variety of customizable products from your logo your banner your offline image your animated overlays your sub emotes your loyalty points subscriber badges everything from start to finish when checking out their complete packages right here you will find the interactive showcase so if you want to know what the donation alert within the pack would look like just click on it and there you go then you have all the options animated overlay webcam overlay which look at that they even considered people who use green screens they also provide gaming mascots and an avatar maker but i'll let you guys figure that out all you have to do is go to own.gg slash gal level that's o w n 3 dgg slash gal level so in order to categorize those tips i broke them down into five major tips and we're gonna start with the first one Please understand that, you know, not all tips apply to your specific situation and your specific channel. Those are general tips. Just just listen and then uh, do what you will with the advice. <laughs> Tip number one is going to be face or faces. Showing your face in a thumbnail will most likely give you more clicks than someone that is not showing their face in a thumbnail. The human brain is a pattern detecting machine uh, the and it turns out the human face is the pattern that we like detest detecting the most. That's why we see a smiley face on the moon. That's why we see Jesus in a piece of toast bread. So whether you like it or not, the viewer's brain will be more attracted to the thumbnail with the face versus one without. Now, before you click off this video because you're that content creator that doesn't show their face, what I would advise you to do is get like some sort of drawing i know there's a lot of people in the commentary uh, community that do that they are youtubers that never show their faces but they have a little avatar or something like that that shows a face a drawn face at, at least for people to to see and and basically base that personality that they have it's all in that little drawing <laughs> this is the character that i'm listening to this is a person now of course there are categories where this is not necessarily the best thing to do i would still advise trying it out for example if you're doing tech most likely your thumbnail is going to be like a very cool photo of the tech that you're about to review although adding your face and you know uh, hiding the tech could be a weird way of having like some mystery on the thumbnail and getting even more clicks through that anyway number two let's talk about the text now this is where you're really, really limited and you might not realize that. Um, you might think, oh, I need to be a good graphic designer in order to make good thumbnails. That's not true, uh, especially with the limits that you have. Usually you would try to put at least three to four words max on the thumbnail. I, I really try to avoid the fourth one, but sometimes I just don't have a choice. And you want those three words to be big. You want them to be very readable, which means that you can't go crazy with the fonts. You can't go like cray crazy font. If I can't read it from my tiny phone, you failed as a, as a, <laughs> as a thumbnail maker. <laughs> so make sure that it's visible, no crazy font. And then there's contrast. It has to stand out from the background in order for it to be really, really, really readable. And a little tip for that is, for example, if you have a little bit, for example, if I were to put white text over there, you see that section right there, white text would go over this no problem but then there's that part with the window and that wouldn't be that separated from the background so what i would do is put a stroke 
over the text. And if I need to put more emphasis into it, I would put a drop shadow, a very hard drop shadow so that it's very, very readable no matter where you're looking at it from, no matter what size it's at. Another tip is to generally put your text to the left. Be Some people say they do that because YouTube will put a bunch of icons when people hover over your video on YouTube. That is a valid reason to do that. But also there's the fact that most people will read from top to bottom, from left to right. So it's just natural to start reading from the left. All right, number three, we're going to talk about colors. Okay, now colors is a complicated one, especially if you're going to put images in your thumbnail. It might not be that obvious that there's like a specific color scheme for the thumbnail, right? What I try to do is go with two colors max. And I'm talking about vibrant colors because vibrant colors do way better than non-vibrant colors. If you already have a color scheme to your channel, you can apply that, but it's not totally necessary. On my channel, I have a color scheme. Of course, that's uh, you're actually seeing it right now is that purple and then the teal, but I don't apply it to all of my thumbnails because I want them to stand out. I don't want it to be too harmonious because I want people to be able to figure out which video is which pretty easily. So I switch up the colors all the time. But one thing that I try to do is incorporate one of those colors in this scene if I'm taking a picture and that's gonna be mostly the thumbnail you know I'm gonna be here like that and then here there's gonna be my text I have so much purple on this scene right now that I pretty much cannot make a thumbnail without including purple in it so if you have colored lights try to you know try to think about the thumbnail while shooting the video basically so for color uh, for color combinations I would go with like the most vibrant colors uh, there's there's those channels those those farm <laughs> those content farm channels like uh what are they called crafty five minute craft or whatever they'll have very very bright colors cover pretty much the whole thing and you'll see all of their thumbnails are like that because it really captivates people uh mostly children to be honest but still it <laughs> it's like a little psychology trick of course once again it depends on what type of content if you're making gaming content you definitely want those bright vibrant colors all over the place if i don't know you're making uh old school uh handmade woodworking <laughs> videos you might not want you know bright color <laughs> Personally, what I like to do is having me be bright on the side. Maybe I'll have like a glow coming out of me. The background should be darker and then my text is going to be super bright, even white sometimes. And then I'll add a border just to make it stand out even more and to really establish that color scheme. But you can definitely pick like between those two colors. I usually use them as highlights and then I'll put like darker versions of them in the background. But if you want to contrast them, you can also do that. For example, red or orange, red and orange were not that contrasting. Basically, if you have have a red background and orange text on it it's not going to be that visible whereas if you put yellow or like a light blue on it that's going to be very very contrasting so watch out with the colors like deep blue and, and kind of deep purple uh, they're not that contrasting so watch out for that the goal is to make two things pop the text and the subject and then number four we have to talk about detail and emphasis all right so having detail on the subject that you want to discuss in the video is important. It could it could be like just a text or it can be that you're trying to show something. There's kind of a formula for certain videos where it's usually like reaction and then subject, no text. That's completely fine too, as, as long as the image that you're showing uh, captivates people enough on top of, you know, the reaction, the face, and then the subject. Um, now here's the problem. You cannot have too much detail on a thumbnail. If like, I don't know if your, your thumbnail is going to be a landscape and then there's your face and then there's your text, but your text also has like a texture on top of the text. And then there's some lens flare, there's some light leaks. And then if there's too much, it's going to be hard for the viewer to focus or to just at, at a quick glance, understand what's happening. So you need to, you know, very, very <laughs> much uh, ration when it comes to detail. If I'm putting my face in a thumbnail, I'm going to make sure that this area is pretty detailed because I know they're going to be looking at it. And then my text is super important. So the background needs to be pretty much completely dark most of the time, but it needs to be very, very contrasted. I'm not going to put my face and image text on top of it. My text uh, has a texture that is det very detailed and stuff like that. I'm, I'm holding something else and that's another subject. So there's too much to look at basically. So keep it simple. Uh, that's why I said, if you have your face in the subject without no text, that's also a good strategy because it's clearly, you can see this happened. Here's how they reacted to it. That being said, if you're going for a very minimalistic type of thumbnail, for example, you know, you're on the side and you're going to cut yourself out uh, of the background. So this is empty. And let's say that you have uh, this bright, very, very bright color. Your text is here and it's like super contrasted with a stroke and a drop shadow. 
um, the way that you would kind of fill out this emptiness, it has to be super subtle. And I do it a lot. I actually add a little bit of lens flare on the text just to give it more life. Or I'll, I'll put like some sort of light leak just to make it seem like more well thought out, but not necessarily to, you know, bombard it with details where you don't know where to look. It's just very, very clear. You're like, okay, there's some lightning effects, but that's it. And number five is going to be familiarity. This could have two different meanings in the sense that familiarity could be like you want in, in your specific niche, you can actually put something that people are familiar with so that they immediately recognize it. For example, if I'm making a Twitch thumbnail that doesn't look like a Twitch Twitch thumbnail if it's just me and my face and then some text like we have a problem for example uh, very mysterious type of thumbnails very clickbaity if you will I need to put a Twitch logo in there so people can immediately know what the heck I'm going to be talking about. If I just put we have a problem, uh, it makes me seem like some sort of vlogger and I'm going to talk about a personal problem. It's going to be story time. No, uh, if I'm making the video about a subject, I definitely want people to understand what what the heck I'm talking about right off the bat just by a quick glance at the thumbnail. And one thing that I also do is try to keep up with the color scheme of certain platforms. If I make a video about YouTube, I'll, I'll try as much as I can to put some red in the thumbnail. If I'm making one about Twitch, it's going to be purple. If I'm making one about Twitter, which I really don't, it's going to be blue. And the other thing that, that, that familiarity also covers is you want people to get familiar with your thumbnails. It's always good to have a style of thumbnail to keep up with a theme. Not necessarily colors, although it can also be colors, but uh, something that people can, when they're scrolling down their subscription list, they can immediately tell by a quick glance, oh, that video is from Gal Level. Oh. I can recognize that. A good channel that does that really well is Corridor Digital. They go with that big contrast black and yellow and you their thumbnails really, really pop. There's subject, there's reaction, and then there's all that black and yellow. I think there's a little bit of their uh, logo in there. Some people will put the logo in the corner. I just made a text channel a couple months ago and I, I just have my logo on the top left corner on every thumbnail so that you're going to see the, the subject and then the logo and you know what the video is going to be about basically so if people really want to see your video they cannot miss it because your thumbnail really pops out something i don't want this main channel is add a border around my video so you know that if there's a border and it's bright colors that's me so whatever you're using to make that thumbnail i would suggest you you know save that project because it has to be a foundation it has to be you have to make a template basically when you start so that your next videos can um have benefit from the same uh, thumbnails of course if you're starting out you're just starting out you don't have any thumbnails or you don't you've never put thought into it like try a couple of things really try a couple of things i know people that have, that have tried like a new style of thumbnails and they got a bunch of views and now they just stick with that type of thumbnail because they feel like it's optimal and then a the bonus tip okay a bonus tip is the size of your thumbnail the size of your thumbnail actually really matters because you're gonna be editing it in you know 1080p probably it's not gonna be showing it 1080p on anyone's screen so keep that in mind you might put like some text or, or uh, uh, some details that you think everyone's gonna see because it's huge on your screen but when it actually shows up on someone's phone it, it's nowhere to be found or or even worse it has not enough contrast to be legible so what I would do is take a screenshot. I go to youtube.com and then I take a screenshot and then I will put my thumbnail that I'm working on uh, and I will size it down and see how it compares with the others. If you're doing something like competitive research, which is something that I talk about in my YouTube tip video, you can also use that. Take screenshots, you know, the top five most viewed videos of your competitors and uh, and see how well yours compares to theirs or if you can make even better thumbnails than them, basically. But talking about competitive research, I feel like thumbnails is also something that you need to do competitive research on. Uh, whatever your niche is, go to YouTube, type that, and try to find a maximum amount of channels that do the same type of content. See the videos that are the most popular, the ones that get the most views. Uh, find out about the thumbnail structures that they use to basically figure out uh, what type, which type of thumbnail actually captivates that specific audience because this is the audience that you want and i believe this is the most of it at least technically with all this information you can go out there and make some awesome looking thumbnails that will definitely get you more views on the youtube or wherever you're using this from if you would like to see a tutorial on how to actually make those thumbnails you know uh especially the classic ones reaction subject or reaction and test 
uh, text on a free software, for example, probably Photopea because it's the closest to Photoshop and I love using it. Um, let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see a tutorial like that. But yeah, I have other videos on how to make thumbnails, but I feel like they need updating anyway. So I might just make a video about it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you have any tips that you use for your thumbnails and you feel like they've been working really well, just let us know. You know, let's share all the tips together. That being said, if you're a live streamer and you're looking for overlays to make your channel look good, go to gumroad.com slash get level. This is where I keep them. There's a lot of them that are free and the rest is just super, super duper affordable. You can follow me on social media. I am uh, pretty active on Instagram and also Twitter. And uh, don't tell anyone, but I also have a TikTok. But now if you look top right on your screen, you will see that YouTube is telling you which video you should watch next. And at the bottom of it, you will see my latest video. So go check him out, learn about all things content creator. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Go out there, make me proud. Get level, out.